After the sudden and bizarre suicide of one of her patients, Dr. Rose Cotter is now experiencing some horrifying occurrences she can't explain. The terrors become worse by the day and Dr. Cotter loses her grip on reality. The horrors push her to confront her past and hopefully have a future. This is Smile. Smile is a brand new horror film releasing for the Halloween season. And it's just one of those movies that you just see the trailer before every movie. Doesn't matter the movie, it's just there for some inexplicable reason. I was hoping that after seeing the trailer before literally every film recently, it would be worth it. It wasn't. Because Smile, while it does have some decent qualities to it, it's just jump scare the movie. That is almost the entirety of this film. And also the film, does attempt to say some things about some real world problems that I personally don't think went over well at all. We'll get into that. Playing the film's lead is Sosie Bacon, and for what it's worth, I think she does an okay job in the film. I really bought that she was stressed out over what was going on with her, and even if the character had some questionable backstory that didn't make much sense, I thought overall she delivered on what she was given, which really wasn't much. I guarantee though, you'll like her character a lot more than you will almost anyone else in this movie because so many of them are just dicks. Rose's fiance, her sister, her therapist, they're all like really bad people that you'd want to see die in a horror movie. Take a guess what doesn't happen in this movie. Unrelated, Rose's fiance is played by Jesse T. Usher. What do you mean that name doesn't sound familiar to you? Do you not remember the hit 2011 live action Cartoon Network film, Level Up? I have to be the only person that has reviewed this movie and made that reference, right? Right? Now how is this film as a horror movie? Is it at least entertaining? Not really. No. Now while there are some good practical gore effects in this film, a lot of the scares are just jump scares. I swear almost everything quote unquote scary in this film is a jump scare. I guarantee it, if you were to do a drinking game and take a shot every time there was a jump scare in this film, you'd be probably plastered by the first 30 minutes, maybe unconscious by 40. Now maybe I'm exaggerating that just a little bit, but I got so tired of the jump scares here. And not even all of them were meant to be scary, they were just meant to be someone walking on screen, hi, uh, 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 stinger music, uh. I tell you, I appreciate Barbarian more and more every day. Now I am going to talk about something a bit more personal to me, and this is more of a personal bias thing. Um, I don't know how many people felt this same way, but I was watching this movie, and I just couldn't help but feel they were trying to literally demonize mental illnesses. The entity will wear people's faces like masks with a smile for hours at a time, and the film almost really wants to hammer home the a mental illness connection or trauma connection, definitely the trauma connection, a depression maybe. And I'm just thinking, why? Why are you doing this? This point does become a bit more ham-fisted when you remember the films about a psychiatrist and takes place not exclusively in a psychiatric ward of a hospital, but a lot of the film does take place there. And I just, a lot of, the connections the film was trying to make or I made with the film. And maybe it's just a me thing. I don't know, but a lot of the connections that were there really just rubbed me the wrong way. Maybe I'm digging way too deep for that criticism, but it definitely seems like that's what they're going for. The film does go in a direction that could have potentially made up for the depiction of mental illnesses, potentially. They dropped the ball on it so hard. Like, here's me watching the movie when I'm like, okay, okay, I can get where the film's going. I'm like, okay, I'm kind of liking it. That's satisfying enough. And then <laughs> literally the last like 20 minutes of this movie are nothing. It's a nothing movie at that point. Now, maybe I am looking at this movie in the wrong light. Uh, I might look into it more. I probably won't, but I might. Uh, maybe this film is a so bad it's good kind of movie because there is one scene that really got me and the audience just belly laughing. It was so stupid, but it was, it was funny. It actually like made me smile for the first time in the movie. It was like, <laughs> okay, that was, that, was, that was good. I tell you what's not funny though, killing a cat for literally no reason, but it's meant to be scary. Like, yeah, I get it. Kill the people, please. Not the animals. That's too much to ask, Hollywood. I can't 
personally recommend the film because I think it's good, because obviously I don't, but maybe if you watched it, you might get something more out of it than I did. I don't know. That's just all up to your interpretation of the film. I just wasn't feeling this film as much as some other people were. I'll be real. I seriously don't know how this, of all movies, has a 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, this is garbage. You actually like this? I swear I will never understand that website. I hope you all enjoyed this review, and if you did, please consider hitting that like button, and if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified when my next review drops. Until next time, I'm Quinn Dunaway, hoping you will keep it cinematic.